A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. A little PSA before we get started. If you haven't checked out my woodworking channel Flemish Wood yet, go over there and subscribe to it. The Mathematics for Woodworkers series is going to start here soon, so a bit more mathematics over on the channel too. Also, my newest video, which is going to come out this weekend, is going to include how to craft this very nice looking cutting board, aka wall sign. I really like it, it has an epoxy inlay and you can also purchase it on stemmerch.eu now, link in the description. This is all for the PSA and now we are going to dive right in. Another episode of Mathematics Gone Wrong Done Right. And this right here is going to be similar to the one that I created like a year and a half ago. This was the first episode of Mathematics Gone Wrong Done Right. Namely what we did in the first episode was adding two fractions together resulted in just the numerator and denominator being added together respectively. But this time we are going to add a little twist to it. Namely what we are going to do is we are going to make the false assumption that we can just add the denominators together if we were to add fractions together. Yeah, this is a very false assumption that a lot of students actually do and we want to see if there are any solutions to it. Maybe there are real solutions to it. We are going to see it and I hope you are going to enjoy the video and now we are going to dive right in. So at first the most logical step to proceed is to just add the fraction together on the right hand side at first. Getting the common denominator is going to result in x, y. And up here we are going to just expand the fractions by respectively x plus y. Okay, thus far that's good. So we have a new equivalence relation, namely that 1 over x plus y is equal to x plus y over x times y. And now what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of the fractions at first. We are going to multiply both sides by x1 under the condition that it's not equal to 0, implying that x and y can both not be equal to 0. And we are going to multiply both sides by x plus y under the assumption that x is not identically equal to y in the process. Giving us overall, so on the left hand side by multiplying with x1 gives us just x1. And on the right hand side we are going to get x plus y squared. Okay, thus far that's good. How can we proceed from here? Well, obviously by expanding what we got here. So by using the binomial theorem, we are going to get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. And now this right here is very tame overall. What we can do now is subtract x1 on both sides, getting rid of 1xy on this side, giving us overall the new equation that x squared plus x1 plus y squared is equal to zero. And this right here is basically just a quadratic that we can now very easily solve with respect to one variable, making an implicit function out of it basically. I sorted it such that we are going to solve for x right now, but you can also solve for y. This really doesn't make a difference whatsoever. Now obviously by using the quadratic formula we are going to get two solutions out. x with respect to y, 1 and 2, is going to resolve them. Okay, we are going to get negative y over 2 plus or minus. And I hope you can see where we are going at here. This is just a quadratic in x, you could say. Okay, with y being our constant overall. Now, other than that, we are going to get the positive or negative third of, we are going to get y squared over 4 minus y squared. You are going to notice that we are going to get a common factor of y squared. We are going to factor it out. Negative y over 2 plus or minus the square root of y squared times. Then we are going to be left with 1 quarter minus 1, which is going to result in negative 3 over 4. Now by assuming that one of the two parts is actually positive, we can break up the third using its multiplicative property. And obviously y squared is going to be positive. Obviously, we don't know this yet, but 3 over 4 is going to be a positive value, meaning we can split this up into the square root of y squared, which is just going to result in y and not the absolute value because we are dealing with the absolute values by using plus and minus in front of the third, meaning we are going to get negative y over 2 plus or minus y. Then we are going to get the square root of 1 quarter. 1 quarter is going to give us the square root 1 half and also square root of 3 on the top, so square root of 3 over 2 and the square root of negative 1 is going to give us i. So 
We now know obviously that x cannot take a real value. We don't have any real solutions whatsoever. We only have complex solutions with respect to y. And now what we can also do is we can factor out y here to get ourselves a purely complex number with a radius of y you could say with a magnitude of y. Meaning overall x with respect to y can be expressed as y times. Now we are going to get negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 over 2 since we have the one half as a common factor. And this is cool. Now we got a solution to this problem. And now you can plug in simple values for y, for example y being equal to 1 and get yourself a simple solution which is going to fit your equation up here, the original one, which is pretty cool, am I right? Now <clears throat> what we can also do is we can turn this complex number that we got right here in algebraic form into its polar form. It's actually quite easy but for this we need to take a look at a triangle, a very special one, an equilateral triangle. By taking a look at an equilateral triangle we are going to, so with, with unit side lengths, we are going to notice that by the properties of an equilateral triangle that all angles in here are going to be pi over 6, uh, no pi, pi over 3, 60 degrees, I'm terribly sorry I messed that one up, pi over 3, pi over 3 power by 3. And now what we are going to do now is we are going to drop a height into here. Okay? And on an equilateral triangle a height is going to imply that the side length where our height is going to stand on, is going to con be, be constructed on, is going to be turned in half. Meaning overall our triangle is going to turn into the following abomination. We are going to get one half here, one here, then power by 3 here and power over 6 up here. And now the very cool thing about this equilateral triangle is on the one hand we turn this right here into a right triangle meaning we can make use of the cosine and the sine in here. Now what is the cosine of power by 3? Cosine of power by 3 is going to be well adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. One half divided by one is going to be one half. Okay one half. Um, we want to turn this into polar form but we are not there yet because we have negative one half at the moment. Hmm. How can we get a cosine of x being equal to negative one half? Well by using the simple property that mathematicians hate, that algebraics hate, <laughs> cosine of pi minus x. Okay? Cosine of pi minus x, what is that? Now if we turn our t uh, x into pi over 3 we are going to get on the one hand that this is okay pi minus pi over 3 is going to give us 2 pi over 3 so the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Now you can just take a look at the graph and determine what um, pi minus some value x is going to evaluate on the cosine but we can also make use of addition theorem giving us so, so the addition theorem for the cosine is going to give us cosine of pi times the cosine of pi over 3 and then plus because we have a negative sign here sine of pi times the sine of pi over 3. Now this latter part really doesn't matter because sine of pi is going to give us 0 and also we know that cosine of pi is going to give us negative 1. Also strictly speaking we have the cosine of negative pi over 3 here but since the cosine is an even function cosine of pi over 3 is the same as cosine of negative pi over 3. So we know that the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to give us negative cosine of pi over 3 which is 1 half. Meaning we can conclude that the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative one half. Okay, this gets rid of the problem with the negative one half part that we got right here. And you can go through the same analysis with the addition theorem for the sine to get to yourself that the cosine, uh, that the sine of two pi over three is going to result in the square root of three over two. And since we have the positive and negative branches here, we can also conclude that x with respect to y can be expressed as y being the magnitude for example times and now in our case we are going to get e to the i 2 pi over 3 but with a positive and negative sign in front to account for the different branches that we have on our square root. Now if we take a look at this in the complex plane it's well just a regular graph of the unit circle or not the unit circle because we have a magnitude of y so this is a circle with a radius of y and 2 pi over 3 is going to give us 120 degrees. So our first value is going to lie here and our second value is going to be the negative branch, negative 2 pi over 3. And this is the geometry that you are going to find for these solutions here. 
And now I leave it as an exercise to the viewer and lecture attendant to figure out what the solutions to 1 over x minus y is equal to 1 over x minus 1 over y are. Leave your comments down there in the comment section below. And I thank you guys for watching. And if you did like what you have seen today, if you want to see more complex numbers, algebra, quadratic formulas, etc., then I invite you to try out the content of today's sponsor, Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. If you are new to the complex number game and you didn't know what we have done before, like taking the square root of a negative number and you are not familiar with the concept of complex and imaginary numbers yet, then Brian might be the perfect source for you to get started with the topic. Brian is an online learning platform and also app you can learn something on the go while walking down the street. Don't look at your phone while walking on the street, but I think you get the point. With nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, um, philosophy, search engines, they even got search engines, it's, it's incredible. All of that can be found over in Brilliant and even more than that with their daily challenges that they do from time to time and also their interactive learning concept. It really makes for a once in a lifetime learning opportunity that you can try out firsthand. And I say firsthand because I mean it. Brilliant allows you to play around with graphs like for example the complex numbers in polar form. You can vary the angles and see how the imaginary and also real part of a complex number are going to change respectively in a geometric manner. Also speaking of geometry, if you take a look at their geometry section, it's one of my most favorite examples because it's just working so well and smooth. You can see how the interior angles of triangles are going to pan out if you vary, for example, the position of one of the corners. If you take a look at this right triangle and then you are going to take this corner and just drag it over here making an equilateral triangle out of it. The sum of the interior angles is always going to add up to 180 degrees and this is what Brian is going to show you with their nice and interactive graphics that you can play around with on your own by using your mouse, your own two hands, a first hand experience. And if this feels like it's something for you, if you really want to try it out for free at first, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but more importantly if you want to get your hands on the whole repertoire of Brilliant, then you are going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription by using said link in the description. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way, it's definitely worth the buck. And other than that, I thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more content like this, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to Flemmy's Wood for more of your Woody Flemmy Daddy's content. And other than that, please stay safe and I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!